Hey everyone, today I'm going to do a little bit of a non-traditional Christmas card using some embossed foil tape and acrylic paint for just kind of a bright, happy card. Now the tape I'm using is from a company called Rainbow Tape, and these are two of the metallic tapes. There are non-metallic colors as well, and they come in various sizes, two to a package. They even come in this super skinny width, so you can do all sorts of fun things with them. I actually masked off my fingernails with this one eighth inch blue tape. You can see I still have one on my nail here. And I'm just gonna pull this off so you can see how cleanly it masks. And then I just cover it up with a top coat for just a fun and funky manicure today. And I do keep the tapes in a sealed container that helps keep lint off the edges of the tape. So I just have them in a little Ziploc. And I'm also going to be using the sandits today. I'll talk a little bit more about those later. But for this project, I wanted to use the one quarter inch silver foil tape. Each roll has a little white tab to get it started. And so you'll just want to make sure that you let that one hang off the edge. And I'm using a piece of fun foam, the thinner fun foam for this. And I'm going to cover this with tape. I wanted to have stripes of tape instead of one big thick piece of tape because I'm actually going for a wood plank look in the background. So once I have these all on there, I'll just trim up the edges with my rubber scissors and get any excess off. It's okay if a little bit hangs over the edge. You're not going to see it in the end. So I'll just smooth that down, make sure I don't have any bubbles. And then I'm going to take the new Pine Bow embossing folder and just emboss this whole thing. And it will curve just a little bit. Don't worry about it. It's very easy to flatten out. The metal in the tape will help you shape it however you need. And I'm going to start with some Turquoise Delusions acrylic paint, which I will apply with a sponge dauber. And I just have one sponge dauber for each color of paint. I am going to be mixing the paints together, and so that's why I'm using the lid, so that when I get the second and third color, if I get a little bit of the other colors in the lid, it's really not a big deal. So I'm just very roughly applying this. There's nothing, I'm not painting a masterpiece here. I'm just getting some color down. A lot of this will end up being removed. And my second color is this bright lime green that I just love. Oh, I love a nice, shocking lime green. I guess that's my inner 80s child. And I'm just going to dab that on again, just very randomly. And then finally, my pink, just a good hot pink. This one's goopy for some reason. I must have left it open or something. And I'm going to add a little bit of that, just get some magenta in there. And then you're going to want to just sit this aside to dry for a while until it's completely dry. I don't like to use a heat gun with acrylic paint because it will bubble the paint. So here's one that I've done before that's dry. And now I wanna talk about the sanding. So I have a sanding block and I also have the sand -its. The black tip on these is 400 grit and the gray is 800 grit, it's very fine. So you can see when I start with the 800 grit, that it just removes a tiny amount of paint in a very precise area. So if you have a really intricate design that you want to sand down, you would want to use the super fine grit. You can also use the less fine grit, which is still pretty fine, the 400. Or if you want more paint removed, you can go in with the sanding block. Now, when you use the sanding block, the difference between this and the sand is, is the sanding block is always going to remove quite a bit of paint from the background. So you'll notice as I go over even just the raised areas, it is, and I have a pretty light touch, it is pulling the paint 
off the background as well. So just pick the tool that you want for the look that you want. I wanted sort of a barn wood look in the background. So I wanted to be able to see those vertical stripes and have that show through. And then I just come back with the sand it and remove a little bit more on just the bows so that I can leave some of those pops of paint in the background. So you can see how fun and easy that is to get kind of a distressed but still super colorful look to a non-traditional holiday color scheme. Thanks so much for watching.